Okay, welcome to the uh, geometry final review for standard two. Um, we're making this one first because this was an area that we had a lot more trouble with and I'm going to try my best to see if I can give you at least a good graphic representation of what's going on with dilation. When we talk about dilations, we're usually talking about making something bigger or smaller. If I look at these two figures, even if I'm not talking about dilation, we've gotten enough under our belt this year that we can look at these and say, you know, I think that these two shapes are similar. Let's look at some measurements and let's just check. This side here is one, and this side here is five. This side here is three, And this side is 15. This side is 2. And this side is 10. This side is 1. And I see a mistake. One, let's see. 1, 2, three. Nope, not a mistake. 5. And this little piece here is 1. And this is 5. This last side, um, difficult to measure. But um, I can see that all of these other sides are there. And I can, I can tell because it's a dilation that they're going to be similar. Now, what I want to show you is if you remember, maybe some of you have taken an art class. Let's think about corresponding points for a moment. This point right here corresponds to this point on that figure. If I draw a line through them, Okay, this point corresponds to that point, so I'm going to draw a line through them. The closest I can think of is this reminds me a lot of what artists do when they're kind of doing some scaling and perspective drawings. I can pick even this point here and this point here. Now I might be able to draw a line through those. Take a little bit of effort to extend it. But if I do that, I see that this shape is almost like a shadow, a large shadow of this shape. In other words, if I held my flashlight somewhere right here, and this was a solid piece of cardboard, then it might very well cast a shadow on the wall further back like this. And the further I move the wall back, the bigger the shadow is going to get. Okay, what I want you to see is this point right here is the point of dilation. So graphically, if, you're, if you put it on a piece of graph paper, you have a good chance of finding the right one if you're really careful about drawing your lines. Notice my line here didn't go very well, but I can tell that it's probably right around here somewhere. Now, that is the point of dilation. The ratio of dilation is this, basically the um, ratio of corresponding sides on the figure. So this side was 5 and this side was 1. So if I wrote it down, it would be 5 over 1, or just 5. Now that, I know that that is scaling from a smaller figure to the larger figure. If I'm scaling from the larger figure, to the smaller figure, I know that it's going to be 1 over 5. And I see that all of these have that ratio. 15 over 3 is 5, and 3 over 15 is 1 fifth. Now, because these lines that go through this um, point of dilation are straight lines, we can think of going along those straight lines is basically counting their slope and an interesting thing happens. I'm going to zoom in for a little bit of space just so we can see the first one. Okay, if I start here and count over, make a little slope triangle of sorts, go over, I notice I went over two and up one. Okay, from my initial little point here in the corner to that, uh, to my point of dilation. If I continue doing that, 
Okay, if I do it one more time, over two and up one, I'll come to this place right here. This is where it would be if it was twice as large. Let me do it again, over two, up one. So this is like the 2x, this is the 3x, over two, up one, the 4x, and the 5x. We said this ratio was five, and so this is one of the ways that we found to find that. Let's see if that works on the other ones too. Okay, so let's look. Let's start at our initial point here. I'm going to have to go a little bit further over this time, but I'm going to go over here and there. Let's see, this is over one, two, three, four, five, and up one. Over one, two, three, four, five, up one. So that would be my 2x. One, two, three, four, five, up one. That's three. One, two, three, four, five, up one. That's four. One, two, three, four, five, up one. That is five. And so I can see my scale factor by doing this also. Now, if I were to connect my two points, like that 2x and the one right th there, then I will have a scaled, fact, scaled figure that is twice as large as this one. Now, um, if I only go from the dilation point to each of the points once, that is a 1x drawing because it's basically 100%. Okay, now, I think I've covered the biggest topics. Just a quick review. Um, I'm probably going to put some of this on another video, so be, be aware that it may continue. But remember that you can find the point of dilation by connecting the corresponding points. Now, if I want to do it another way, I can look at a point. Let's say I didn't know that was it. I could look at this point, and I could look at this corresponding point. I could figure, okay, how far did I go over, and how far did I go up? Well, I know I went up 1, 2, 3, 4. I know I went over... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. No, I went over 20. This one step from your original figure to the larger figure, and it doesn't matter if they're going from larger to smaller, you can still, you can still do this. Um, You can look at this and go, okay, this was a 5x. I can tell because this is 15 and this is 3. I know it's growing by a factor of 5. But I know that this is all of the steps except for the first one. So I think, okay, this has to represent four steps. Well, if this represented four equal steps, then each step must have been 1, going up by 1. If... This represents four equal steps. It must have gone up by 20 divided by four, which is, or gone over by five. So let's see, we check that. Over five, up one, over five, up one, over five, up one, over five, up one. Yeah, there's my four steps. I can go back from my original, my, my one starting here, and do the same thing back now. Down one and over five, continuing that pack pattern except going backwards. Now, we're going to do some examples in the next video. Um, I don't want to uh, uh, split it at this at a different point, so I'm going to split it here and just show the examples and the other off the um, review sheet.